This previously recorded webinar was created for the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. Hello there, my name is Lauren Burleson. I am a digital ambassador for the Nevada Digital Learning Collaborative. Thank you so much for joining me today. And we are going to be reviewing and going over how to create a group in Canvas. So this is for educators who want to incorporate group work and group activities into Canvas, whether that be if you're distance learning or hybrid, or of course, if you're in the classroom doing the blend ed model. This video is in two parts. So the first part, this video is on groups and the second part will be on the collaborations tool. So that video, if you wanna watch part two, will be linked in the description below. Uh, there is also in the description, a link to the presentation that I will be showing you. Uh, today. So if you would like to have that as you continue through uh, watching this video, feel free to access that as well. Okay, so let's get started on learning how to create a group. And also I will be showing you as well how students can access their groups within Canvas. So you'll get to see the teacher setup and perspective as well as the student perspective of groups within Canvas. Let's go. All right, so talking about engagement with Canvas, Canvas groups are a great way to get students to collaborate and work together. And it doesn't have to be just in a digital, so like distance learning format. I actually use Canvas groups in my classroom. My um, So it's like a, the blend ed model, as we like to call it, where we have students in the class, but they are one-to-one -one with computers. So we'll be reviewing how to create groups for students and then how we can attach those groups to assignments. So creating assignments for groups and then the student perspective. So how do students navigate into Canvas? How do they access their group? How do they get to their group work? So the first step in creating a group is entering your course and going to the people navigation tool in your course navigation bar. So that's right there. And you're just gonna click on that and then it will take you to, so then it will take you to this page where you see the list of people in your group. And groups are only going to form for students. So meaning like if you have parents or an observer, um, they are not gonna be like synced obviously and have access to the group. Um, it's only for students. And um, also, like, if you have, for example, a TA or another teacher, they will be able to view the group, uh, but they won't have access to, like, it's, it's different for an instructor versus a teacher. So to create the group, you're going to go up to the uh, plus blue button that says group set. So you'll create a set that can sync and be added to assignments. Once the group has been created and you've given it a name, because um, a window will pop up, which I'll show you in a minute, you're gonna click on the tab. So the, there will be tabs that start to line up at the top for every group set. And this is great um, because then you can create multiple, um, like I used to, usually like to name the group set after the assignment or the unit we're doing. So that way they can still remain in the group like from the past, but I can switch it up without having to go back and alter the first group set that I made. So creating groups. So when you click that blue button for group sets, it's going to pop up with this window. So that's the title of the group set. Again, that's usually like the name of the project or the assignment. Or like I said earlier, I like to usually do it by unit because we'll be in the same group for that unit project. 
Uh, then after that, you can have students, you, get, you can give them this option if you click this box where students can actually sign themselves up in a group. So I've done this um, before with uh, the egg drop project for my eighth graders where I just created the number of groups and then they got together physically in the classroom and were like, okay, this is our group. We have four people. And then once we had all those groups, I would go, your group one, your group two, three, so on. And then they would actually in Canvas go to that group number and just click join group. So that's an awesome tool if you want to give your students some more flexibility, but you don't have to do that. You can actually click um, or leave this off and then it will gener auto generate and place your students randomly. Um, the next one, which is uh, kind of grayed out because we didn't select this box, <laughs> is require group members to be in the same section. Uh, and this is really great. Well, actually, I said that earlier for you don't have to click this box. It actually will come up later once you select these ones. So don't feel like you have to allow self sign up for this to happen. But require group members to be in the same section. So this is really great if, for example, you have multiple periods, you have cross-listed, so you're gonna check the box so that way they cannot self-sign up in, let's say, period, they're in period one, but they want to, they were joining a group in period two. No, that's not gonna happen. So it'll also ask you that when you come down here for group structure. So if you're auto-generating it, it will say require group members to be in the same section. So when it auto-generates, they're not gonna assign students to a different period for you. So that's really nice because then you have all the students in the same period grouped up. So that's uh, moving down to group structure. That is the auto-generated part where uh, students are, you can either split them up by number of groups or uh, split them into groups with so many students per, per group. And I usually like split students into groups because it's, for me, uh, it's a lot easier to go, I want four people maximum in a group. And so two, if they're self-signing up, they cannot go past that number. Um, so like if there's, they decide we're going to be a group of five and I was like, no, only group of four. Uh, students cannot sign up in that group and be synced with that. So that's kind of a nice feature. Um, and then the students split up into so many groups. Of course, that's like you want maybe, you know, eight groups in a class and then it doesn't really matter how many students are placed into the, that group. Then uh, select and create groups later this requires you, so let's say you're like, I don't want them to self-sign up, and I also don't want the, the Canvas to auto-generate, um, you know, place the students by the computer. I don't want that. You actually have the option to select, I'll create the groups later, and then you auto, or excuse me, not automatically, you manually create these groups. So meaning you, it, it'll give you a list on the side and I'll show you what that looks like in a little bit, but it'll give you a list of students on the side and you will click and drag the student to the group that you want them to be in. And this is nice. Let's say if you, you know, are basing the groups on test scores or, um, you know, whether they're high, middle, low, if you really want to focus on that, you can do this yourself by clicking and dragging those students and creating the group manually or later. This is this whole window is really for um, uh, like the all the setups are really like auto generated. But if you want to not like you can skip over all of these and go straight to I'll create the groups later. That's not a bad option if you want to do that. And then, of course, lastly, you click save. Okay, so in People Navigation, I can create a group set by clicking group set and then giving that group the name. So maybe I'll just do for today web design. And then if you want, you can add a dash. I like to add that just because then the numbers, when it becomes numbered, it looks a lot nicer. 
So then one thing you can do is you can allow the students to sign up themselves so they can assign um, themselves to a group. But um, for this one, I am going to have them split up. So we're going to split the students up into groups of, let's just say, five students. Or you can uh, create the group number. So if you want like 10 groups, it'll auto-generate however many students evenly into those groups. And then I want to make sure to require the group members to be in the same section um, because they're in different periods. Because then it won't work correctly. <laughs> okay. Now you do have this option to create the group manually, meaning you click and drag. Um, I know a lot of teachers who have used this based off of like data that they have where they want the students to be, let's say, like in a group of um, diverse learners. So like a high, a middle, a low. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but when you have it set up, it is really, that's one way to do it. Um, so then you can automatically assign a group leader if you want to. I'm just going to click that box for now, and then we're going to move on and go to save. All right, so let's say you clicked save and you uh, chose auto-generated by number of students. So what will then happen is you'll see this where it says your groups are being created. It may take a few minutes, as it stated, and then uh, this page will pop up. Um, so you'll see you have the tab for everyone. So that's all the people in your course. And then you have a tab for your group. So I labeled it group project. So a new tab will appear every single time you create a group set. So uh, you can always view every single group too. So um, you'll see we have group project one, group project two, group project three, and so on. So these are the, it always, so I might have given it the title group project and then Canvas auto-generated the numbers for me and the students. And you'll notice right here, if you click on the triangle, it will drop down to the list of all the students' names. Now, of course, I have them hidden for safety purposes, but you'll see over here that it says this first group, group project one, has four students, two has four students, and three has five, and so on. Uh, so that's really awesome to be able to see everything. I actually sometimes, when like, because my um, tables are... Uh, I have like group tables for four, so I will usually even like number them. And then I use Canvas groups to kind of go to auto generate new seating charts for me sometimes. Just the thought, but also that way too, because they can collaborate. And then when I know that we're doing some sort of group exercise, what will then happen is I already have the group and like the table number set to go. So that's kind of nice because then they can collaborate more together and turn in one assignment as a group in Canvas. All right, so you'll notice that I actually only have two people within a group and that's because these are my colleagues and I forgot that I only have four people enrolled <laughs> in this section, which is fine. So I had to go back and um, change it to two students. But um, I'm just going to show you an example of if I don't want to have let's say Danielle and Darren don't get along and I need to switch them out of the groups I can do that manually just by doing that so moving around people is pretty simple and pretty easy all right so now let's say you want to create an assignment for your group the easiest way to do this is to just go back to your modules page and then within an assignment, let's say you, you want this one assignment then to turn it in together, right? They're working at a table um, and they are, they're going to work on this one digital uh, exercise together. So what you're going to do to edit that assignment to make it a group, you're going to open the assignment you already have. And then within edit mode, that's where you're going to attach all the groups. Now, if you are a Google using educator, one thing I really like to do for group work is create a um, hyperlink for them to create a copy and share to everyone. Uh, the other the Google Assignments, for example, like the external tools, they will not, it, it will create a copy 
for each individual student. And if I want them to just work on one document together, I think this is the best option where you go up to, let's say you've created a doc, right? And here's like an example link. It will say for your version, edit. If you just delete edit at the end and put copy, you now have a new link which will generate this page that says copy document. So it will force a make copy and then usually I'll assign like a leader and then they share it with their group. I think this is a really quick, easy way to do Google Documents in Canvas um, is by creating this, this link. So just wanted to kind of show you how I would give the content or the assignment for Google in, in this Canvas format. Oh, and then I have an example assignment here. So this is just like a web design mock assignment and they have this source here, but then to complete the assignment, they can click on this link. And this is how I generate um, an auto copy. So all I've actually done is in um, Google Slides, when it says edit, I get rid of edit and I replace it with copy. And then it comes up with this link so students can make a copy. So what you can do is you can assign when you have a group, assign a group of kids, have one student be the leader. They can make a copy of the assignment and share it with their group. Okay, so after clicking edit though, at the top that we saw a couple slides ago, there is a portion that says group assignment. You wanna select the box that says this is a group assignment. Now you have the option to have the assignment, see where it says assignment grade, uh, to each individually. So if you want them to each turn in their own individual assignment, or let's say they're turning in one, but you're giving them an individual grade, that is an option. Or you leave this blank, and then if you have 10, let's say you have 10 groups, you only have to grade 10 assignments within SpeedGrader. So kind of a cool thing. Um, then also where it says group set, you can actually, I, I showed you the way in which you go from the navigation um, bar in uh, the course navigation bar of people, but you can actually do it right within an assignment. So it says group set and you can see here I've selected group project because I already created one. But if I want to create a new group category or a new group set, I can do that within the assignment and it goes through the exact same steps that I showed you earlier, okay? So note that if you have multiple like group sets, you, when you select this part, the drop down menu, it will show you every single group set that you've ever created. So again, a nice feature because let's say you're now on a new unit and you have a new group or even just a new assignment. Now you've chosen, you can keep the old one without having to alter it, and a new one, and students are now placed within a new group working with new people. So let's just click edit for the time being. <clears throat> you can see here I have my directions in the Rich Content Editor. It's a file upload assignment, and then this is the part where um, it gets to be a group assignment. So I assigned it to a group assignment. The group set is called group project. Let me go. So that, that is where you would assign it. And then you can create different dates for the different groups. So this is probably my favorite feature uh, for group assignments is the speed grader view. So when you create groups, and when you have group assignments in Canvas, it cuts down how many submissions a teacher needs to grade. So as you can see in the example here, if there are three groups, there are only three assignments for the teacher to grade. And this makes me, the teacher, very happy because I don't have to grade as much. So instead, so that is also if, of course, this is graded as a group. So we're not selecting that box in the assignment where it states we're grading the students individually. 
So make sure that box is unchecked if you want to grade each group and ha each have them have the same exact grade. So over here in Speed Graders, you can see I only have three groups. We've got, and it doesn't tell me, which is kind of nice, um, but I can always look it up later. We've got Group Project 1's assignment, Group Project 2, and Group Project 3. So it doesn't tell me the students' names. It just gives me the which group um, submitted what assignment. I'm grading it like, like that. So now what I want to show you is how a student would access their group and their group work. So the easiest way is actually just on the dashboard. So when you create a group for a student, groups on their global navigation bar, that's that blue bar there, automatically appears for a student. So they just log into Canvas and then they would see on the left side of their screen, groups. They would click groups and then students will have access to seeing all the group names. So you can see over here um, when the group button is clicked, I have all of these different groups that I'm in. So that's why it's also really important to name them specifically, I think, to whatever assignment you're doing. Because if you just have, you know, group project, that's group one. And then let's say you're doing another group project and you keep naming it just like group project one, group whatever. Uh, it's important because then the students can go, I don't know which group, I don't remember what group number I'm in. And I really need to click the appropriate group. So it's, an, it's a good idea to name it after whatever unit or assignment you're on. So that way they go, oh, well, I know we're working on web design right now. So I know that's the group I'm in. Or um, sometimes, for example, I've done magnetism. And they'll just go, oh, we're on magnetism. So I know I'm in this group and so on. So that's why I think it's super important to name it after an assignment, unit, whatever you're working on. So once a student has selected the, the group, so they clicked groups, they selected the group name that they're in, it actually takes them to their own personal group homepage. Now, this is really cool because students are able to collaborate here. Um, they can, if let's say if a student is absent, right? they are actually able to follow along with the group that is in person at school because they have this little like group homepage. So the teacher also can access each individual group. So it's not like they have this private corner, secret corner in Canvas where they can create and you know, send inappropriate messages to each other or something like that. That's me thinking too, because I'm a middle school teacher, so that's always popping in my head. But um, also, I when I'm assigning group work and they get their home page for the group, I always like to remind students that every single time they make an announcement or they send a message or discussion, anything like that, because they do have the ability to do that. I get a notification. So once you say that, it kind of they're like, oh, okay. So it becomes, you know, it's an education tool. So in this homepage, though, students can create an announcement. They can create a page. They can look at the people within their group. They can create discussions. They can add files, and they can also uh, coll do collaborations, which I will show you what that looks like a little later. So. If a teacher, so if a teacher wants to access the group's homepage, all she or he has to do is go to people, go to the appropriate group set or tab, and then within where it says the group name, at the very end here, it, there's the three dots. And you can click visit group homepage. And I really like to do this because then I show like examples of what the groups have been doing within their homepage and how they've been collaborating with each other. Um, so it's really great to show them too that you have access to this so you can see what and um, show the class and demonstrate really good examples as well. Okay, so the teacher 
and I know it's a student perspective, but this is also teacher perspective here. When the teacher clicks on that three dots, if uh, they want to switch the groups, they want to see, see it differently, let's say they want to go to group seven, all they have to do is they're in the group, see how we're in group uh, one, but all I, all I would have to do is click switch group and I can go to any one of these groups. So it's easier access instead of having to go back to people, click on the tab and so on. So a teacher can easily switch groups and view different home pages. But let's go into a group. So we can actually visit the group homepage. And so from here you can see um, I've created an announcement that is a group Google Meet. So from here, I can go to um, create an announcement that shows up on the student's homepage. And all I did to add that Google Meet link was use my Google Hangout Meet extension that I have. And um, now, now you can see here, I have a Google Meet for just this group. So that way, when they enter, they can see their announcement, click here, and then cl click right here, join Google Meet, which will take them to their Google Meet that only the group can access. So I can see people, I can see who's in this group. Um, we can add pages to this group if we want, like a student contract maybe that the students um, also have access to edit. So while the students have access to create announcements, pages, uh, look at the people, create discussions, all of that, um, the teacher also does as well. So if I want to leave them an announcement, let's say that they're like behind on their project and I can see that, I can leave that specific group an announcement for their, let's say group one, and only group one students will be notified. So it's kind of a cool little feature within those group homepages. The last thing that I would like to explain with the homepage, you don't even have to use it. You don't even have to show your students that they have a space within Canvas to collaborate. It can actually just be completely ignored. Um, if you just want to do it just for the groups and the group assignments and grading that way, you can only, you can only use it that way if you wish to. So it's not something that is a have to. That's one of the reasons why I think I love Canvas so much is they give you lots of options and you don't have to use it if you don't want to. You can use it how you like to. Um, so when I first started using groups, I didn't even really even know of the homepage existence for each individual group. I was just creating groups and syncing them to assignments and students were turning in work that way. Um, so it's not if it if at first you're like, I don't want to do that. You don't have to. You can just use the group feature for syncing it to assignments and doing it that way if you like. And then I would encourage you later on, once you get really comfortable with creating groups, to try and use the home page group feature because it is really fun for the students to collaborate and they feel like they have some ownership with creating announcements and pages and discussions and things like that. And it's really cool to see what they create in Canvas too. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create a group within Canvas. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. I'll have my email posted shortly. Also, if you would like to contact me through social media, I'm pretty much everywhere under Canvas Queen. So again, I just wanna thank you for watching. And if you wanna enjoy the part two on collaborations in Canvas, again, that will be linked in the description below. Have a fantastic day. Thanks.